40. Be self-confident. Personality is developed by the experience of situations. Genius is the reflection of personality which is expressed by words and acts. A person born and dies but his personality is immortal. Personality is the key to all success. We should develop the spiritual, mental and practical sides of our characters and well-balanced personalities. We should adapt different good ideologies in our characters so that one lives and characters are formed properly. Every individual is basically having greatness, vigor and purity in his character. Everybody is originally having all powers, full-fledgedness and purity. We should just adjust it with our activities. Negative attitudes are suicidal and generate inefficiency. Be confident that you will succeed. Face the reality calmly, you will surely succeed. Merit, intelligence, personality, etc. mainly depend on social situation and environment. Proper nutrition, environment etc. are its external preconditions. On the other hand, a developed formation of inherited brain is an internal precondition. The ideas, ideologies, faith knowledge etc. which will be entered in the brain of a child, will be implemented in future by the actions of the child. Life is an important matter, so we should lead it with the best use of our common sense. Character is the source of energy of life. One can't he have a personality fully free from his surrounding environment. Personality consists of thinking, feelings, emotions and character. Especially, limit, sense of distress, poverty and differentiation of a person all are his mental affairs and it depends on his activities or practical life. Personality of a man is affected by his way of thinking, society and culture. Strength, excitement, inspiration, attraction and repulsion and the controlling power of speed are the factors of mobility of a personality. Inherited qualities, education and social bindings influence the flourishment of personality to a great extent. Although one's physical development and characteristics depend on heredity to a great extent, yet the environmental factors like food, nutrition, weather, sickness, school, friends, facilities for education etc. affect the development of physique and mentality. Heredity determines the limit of our development. As such, we have limited capability to acquire anything. On the other hand, any special quality inherited by somebody does not flourish properly in absence of favorable situations. That means personality is a mix of heredity and environment. Personality of somebody is influenced by his changing inherited characteristics and qualities, surrounding environment, his own way of thinking, hopes and aspirations. Efficiency etc. Personality means the combination of a person's way of thinking, emotions, attitudes, sense of values, feeling, love, inspiration, habits and some of his physical characteristics, which keep on repeating the conduct of a person. Personality is not static but dynamic. Generally, personality means the overall character of a person through which his individuality is expressed. Personality is the substance of a person. The habits formed by inspirations, rewards, indications and reactionary factors make the permanent structure of a personality. People tend to want to talk when they are under stress and respond to kindness and understanding during trying circumstances. Operate within a framework of personal and culturally derived values. People tend to respond positively to individuals who display the same value system and negatively when their core values are challenged respond to physical and, more importantly, emotional self-interest. This may be as simple as responding to material rewards such as extra responding to support in rationalizing guilt. A new set of deadly motivational factors were Project Slammer focused on motivations for people violating the trust they had been given with access to sensitive information, contrasts a differing set of psychological factors. Motivational factor easily despairing over their situation I should have better than this. Short attention span I am bored. Polarized relationships slash responses if you are not with me, you are against me. Poor relationships I am alone slash lonely. Lack of maturity. Poor impulse control I want it now. Sociopathic tendencies who cares about you. 
self-conceited, self-absorbed me, me, me. Types of reinforcement Positive reinforcement is an increase in the future frequency of a behavior due to the addition of a stimulus immediately following a response. Giving, or adding, food to a dog contingent on its sitting is an example of positive reinforcement, if this results in an increase in the future behavior of the dog sitting. Negative reinforcement is an increase in the future frequency of a behavior when the consequence is the removal of an aversive stimulus. Turning off, or removing, an annoying song when a child asks their parent is an example of negative reinforcement, if this results in an increase in asking behavior of the child in the future. Avoidance conditioning is a form of negative reinforcement that occurs when a behavior prevents an aversive stimulus from starting or being applied. While it may appear so, punishment is not the opposite of reinforcement. Rather, it has some other effects as well as decreasing undesired behavior. Other reinforcement terms A generalized reinforcer is a conditioned reinforcer that has obtained the reinforcing function by pairing with many other reinforcers, such as money, a secondary generalized reinforcer. In reinforcer sampling a potentially reinforcing but unfamiliar stimulus is presented to an organism without regard to any prior behavior. The stimulus may then later be used more effectively in reinforcement. Socially mediated reinforcement, direct reinforcement, involves the delivery of reinforcement which requires the behavior of another organism. Primacy principle is a special case of reinforcement which states that a highly preferred activity can be used effectively as a reinforcer for a less preferred activity. Reinforcement hierarchy is a list of actions rank ordering the most desirable to least desirable consequences that may serve as a reinforcer. A reinforcement hierarchy can be used to determine the relative frequency and desirability of different activities and is often employed when applying the PRIMAC principle. Contingent outcomes are more likely to reinforce behavior than non-contingent responses. Contingent outcomes are those directly linked to a causal behavior such a light turning on being contingent on flipping a switch. Note that contingent outcomes are not necessary to demonstrate reinforcement, but perceived contingency may increase learning. Contiguous stimuli are stimuli closely associated by time and space with specific behaviors. They reduce the amount of time needed to learn a behavior while increasing its resistance to extinction. Giving a dog a piece of food immediately after sitting is more contiguous with, and therefore more likely to reinforce, the behavior than a several-minute delay in food delivery following the behavior. Non-contingent reinforcement refers to response-independent delivery of stimuli identified serve as reinforcers for some behaviors of that organism. However, this typically entails time-based delivery of stimuli identified as maintaining aberrant behavior, which serves to decrease the rate of the target behavior. As no measured behavior is identified as being strengthened, there is controversy surrounding the use of the term non-contingent reinforcement. They are baited with virtually irresistible reinforcers that lure the student to the trap. Only a low-effort response already in the repertoire is necessary to enter the trap. Interrelated contingencies of reinforcement inside the trap motivate the person to acquire, extend, and maintain targeted academic-slash-social skills. They can remain effective for a long time because the person shows few, if any, satiation effects. The first characteristic of a personality is item or sex. It is the subconscious part of a personality and here there is no room for logic or conscience. Its main principle is to satisfy the basic demand and to enjoy. The second characteristic is egoism which is conscious and active. Egoism organizes and control all behaviors of a person. The main function of egoism is to adjust between the demands of opposite natures of Eidman's subconscious mind. The third characteristic is moral or conscience. Ideology of a person is developed through well coordination between his egoism and subconscious mind. The actual indicators of one's personality are his emotions, feelings, logical thinking about controversial matters and an acceptable conduct according to philosophy of life. Self-realization means to realize about one's entity, which is the central point of one's personality. 
A personality consists of an ego and superego. It activates a person to overcome troubles and to take any measure to attain happiness. Ego makes a person conscious about the social reality. The conscious and subconscious ego expresses the moral ideologies. Superego evaluates a person's activities and its way. Superegoism of a person becomes a moral critic of person and guides him to act according to its suggestions. One S personality can be developed through self-recognition, self-determination and active utterances or actions. Egoism is based on self-defense and sexual tendency is based on reproduction of generation, which are the natural instincts of human beings. It removes unwanted tendencies and habits to subconscious mind when it activates to acquire happiness. A personality is guided by its internal possibilities, hopes and aspirations and ideologies. Aiming at new objectives and continuous search for implementing aims to determine the direction of a personality add a new significance in a life. The inner power of character guides a person. To become an ideal man, a man should have self-realization. A person faces problem when he cannot solve his habitual conduct. A man may be physically not attractive but he can make his personality beautiful by his new troll love, which will surely be expressed his face, conduct and expressions. One s personality remains hidden behind the activities of his personal life, his physiomental behaviors and his individual ideas. An ideal man does not bother for everything around him. An ideal man justifies his personal desires with the measuring stick of others. Man is sensitive to approval and non-approval of his surrounding situations. Make your personality firm, then nobody will be able to dominate you wrongfully. What does a man want? The answer is quite easy, to live peacefully with his own conduct. Expression of constructive protest is a sign of a man with a strong personality. The best way of attaining a good personality in a higher status is liberalism. A man can attain a charming personality only when he can avoid loose talks and evil deeds. He who talks in line with everybody is having a weak personality. Ability of making hue and cry is not a good personality, but personality is such a humanly quality by which a man gets regard and love from all. A great man is recognized by his habitual behavior with the persons junior to him. Personality is developed if a man can remain firm in his determination. One s characters can be judged his activity but his conduct is should be judged by his aims, hopes, aspirations, ideas, feelings about the knowledge acquired by his sense organs and all his determinations and activities regarding his sense of values. Follow a man who has a good character. Human conduct is the root of variety in the world. Follow the straight path. Later on, it will be an instance for others. Our aim of life should be to develop our character, by which we can achieve tranquility. Men and women are naturally different. You can mold a woman according to your choice. If you want to get something done by her, get it done accepting her characteristics, otherwise she will break down. And breaking down means she will leave you. Our every movement of limbs, every thought and any action leaves some beliefs in our minds. One s personal character is determined and controlled by these beliefs. If someone thinks about a good subject, does good deeds and thus create good beliefs in his mind, those beliefs will inspire him for doing good deeds. You can do everything. Human activities are guided by their characters created by their intelligence. Human activities that is their characters are determined by the actions and reactions of their environments. One s character is known by his color. When yellow become one obedience changes into disobedience. Class division are absent to a good natured. As all shadows are of the same color. He who is benevolent, frugal, neutral, dutiful, diligent, pious, having integrity with other, have regard for work, rectifies himself present gifts to other, remains pure, justified and having humanly qualities is having a good character. The common symptoms of a man with a good character is having sense of prestige is efficient in conversation, is having religious mental attitude, is justifiable and is courageous. Don't degrade yourself, leave egoism and rectify your character by calmness and self-control.
he who is free from hypocrisy and is simple is having the best character. He who is calm and quiet, free from egoism, efficient, puritan, well-behaved, well-educated, self-controlled, talks less and shortly, free from anger, truthful, sweet-spoken, peace-loving, obedient, regardful, cheerful, dutiful, judicious, steady, not offensive, wise, keeps his sense organs under his control, firm, a good scholar, realizes everything deeply, advisor having ready wit and courageous is really having an ideal personality. Our characters are the results of our conduct. Egoism is the slave of sense organs. One s character depends on what he thinks, does and how he reacts. In other words, that is the characters of a person. If you want to know the actual character of a man, you are to mix with him closely for a long. Everybody has three kinds of characters, which he shows openly, which is actual and which he thinks to have. Your behavior in the darkness is your character. Most of the people are hypocrite. Many people are quite opposite to his appearance which normally see. Genius is developed in loneliness but character is developed in the worldly affairs. Mix with the society if you want to make your character strong but if you want to develop your merit austere in a lonely place. Character is the permanent ornament of a person. 1s egoism grows on the basis of his past experience. It is easier to try for keeping 1s characters clean than to revive a good characters after spoiling it. One can tolerate troubles easily only when he reaches to a high stage of moral characters. He who can keep his character upright even during his serious financial problem, is having a good character. Change comes to one s characters for three reasons, those are association of powerful men, being powerful and gaining abundance of wealth after leading a poor life. Remember that he is really intelligent whose character is not changed after crossing one or more stages as mentioned above. The process of building a character continuous from childhood up to death. Genius is the best part of a man's character, and his humanly qualities is the daylight of his character, which is a vast thing in his firm. Glory of a good character proves itself greater than genius due to its broadness. There is no doubt that a man superior in character is superior man as a matter of fact. Simplicity of character is the natural manifestation of deep thoughts. Mental laziness is responsible for spoiling a character. Character means not to surrender before injustice. In fact, when we say character, we mean whatever is the best of a man. Character of humanity is in wisdom and acts. Human character consists of love, aspirations, pathos and beliefs. No doubt, a person having a good character can win the world. There is nothing in the world which is impossible for him.